Hello and welcome to Pioneer Cube. I have no idea what's in the format, but I'm guessing it's Pioneer Playables. We have a Time Walk, Exquisite Firecraft, Lovecraft Beast, a Love Spectral Sailor, some mana fixing. I think the, the mana fixing in this format is going to be quite bad, so you really do want to try and stay like single colored if possible. Um, Karn helps you stay open. I think Planeswalkers are probably quite good in a format like this. So I don't mind taking Karn just to see what happens. There's a lot of colors that we're passing. Um, oh, Migration Path is also very good, but I'm going to take Karn. I think Karn goes in a lot of decks, and for, for not seeing a format, um, basically my approach generally is stay open for a little bit, get a feel for what types of cards are in here. So I'm getting the feel like if Wingmate Rock is in this format, it's going to be a very like grindy, creature, value-heavy format where Planeswalkers probably dominate. Um, same with like Entrancing Melody, this card's quite good as well. I love this artwork. That's really nice. Um, so what do we take here? There's a lot of lands. Um, shock lands are probably the best ones. You could take Watery Grave. I imagine cheap spells are at a premium. Like, if you can just Heartless Act a creature, um, that seems really, really good. Also, like, stealing creatures is good. We could take Elspeth if we would just want to go big. She does clear the board pretty well. But I'm imagining there's just, like, an abundance of expensive cards. I think I just want to take Watery Grave. No, I'll take the Heartless Act, actually. That... It seems like a worth or good enough card. Ooh, Glorybringer. Love me some Glorybringer. Um, there's also Fatal Push if I want to stay open in like Pack Rat. I'm liking the look of this. I love snapping Gnarlid, just the artwork. <laughs> it looks like if your cat was actually strong when they're like scared and running away from you, but this guy's doing the opposite and he's running towards you. Um, I mean, how do I get away from Glorybringer? This card's absurd. I think the answer is I don't. I just take it. And that's the easy answer. Okay, perfect. Is uh, Goldspan Dragon in Historic or Pioneer? I hope it is, because that would be that would be the dream. Because I play these cards in Vintage Cube. Glorybringer is still very good in Vintage Cube. Goldspan Dragon, I end up like playing it in the sideboard a lot, because it's just not necessarily up to the power level. But in Pioneer, where creatures matter and like things like that, I imagine they're just much, much better. So I'm excited to be able to hopefully do some dragon things. All right, we have Ashcloud Phoenix... 4 mana 4 1. When it dies, return it to the battlefield face down. You have to spend 6 mana to turn it face up. I don't love that. I do like Disfigure. Agent of Tentry is good. It is expensive. But if uh, blue is open, that's a good route to go. Some Planar Outburst, some Temples. I think I'm just going to take Disfigure. See if we can go like into an interesting black red deck. Okay, so red seems to be reasonably open. I think Annex. This is a 3 mana x3. Um, it's going to start as a 2-3, and then whenever it or another creature dies, you get a satyr that can't block. And if the creature had power 4 or greater, you get 2 tokens. So if Glorybringer dies, you get 2 satyrs. The actual dream. Uh, I could take Foreboding Runes if I want to stay open. I like Sheltered Thicket, Cycling Lands, just help you go deep. The Nally will be good if I go, like, black, red, like, removal slash value. I mean, that seems like a lot of fun. I think I'm going to take the Ruins, though. I'm not in love with any of those cards, and I don't know if I'm, like black splashing red or red splashing black or like none of the above so we'll see none, none of those like red cards were like a huge signal to go into those colors and now i'm seeing a lot of blue and green oh boy um well none of these cards are particularly good i guess multiple choice is scrub one draw a card bounce a creature get an elemental so for five mana you scrub one draw a card bounce a creature and make an elemental that's pretty good. Tempted to just take Thrill of Possibility, though, and stick to my guns. We'll see what happens in the next pack, because right now it looks like blue-green is open, but I could be passing a bunch of blue-green, because I haven't really passed much uh, good black-red. I passed Annex, I think, and that was it. So I could be setting myself up for pack two, even if blue-green is what's open in this direction. Yeah, okay, that was just a, that was just a bad pack. No problems there. We could take Chandra Parmancer or Pianilar. Uh, this is the black-white dual land. This is red-white. I mean, I could, I could end up in Mardu, but again, I think that's less than optimal. Um, I like Chandra more than Punilar, I think. I'm going for a uh, controlling black-red Planeswalker type deck. I, I just, this is one of my favorite types of archetypes, like black-red removal with dragons. It's just so sweet. So if given the opportunity, I will be going for this deck. I think there was a video, what was it, Corset Cube? I think it, the video is titled like my new favorite deck or something. You can search for it. And it was mono red planeswalkers in Corset Cube. It was so awesome. That that deck was like, I think it was my new favorite deck. It was just so much fun. It had um, 
three mana Chandra, the one that lets you like Snapcaster Mage spells every turn, then it's so absurd and it like upticks all your red planeswalkers. And then obviously it had Parmenter's Goggles because that card's insane. Um, here, I think I do just take Ugin. The Great Finisher goes well in a lot of things. The Colorless Spells Clause doesn't matter too much, but like making a 2 2 that draws you a card every turn is good. I could also take Desecration Demon, but I think I like Ugin a little bit more. Okay, the Firecraft comes around. I mean, that's a good sign for us. Spectral Sailor came around. So there was a lot of. Yeah, I think our colors are reasonably open. There was a lot of white that got taken. Yeah, we take this. Entrancing Melody came around. That's actually surprising. Um, I could take a Frostboil Snarl, actually, because maybe blue red is where I'm supposed to be. I only have two black cards. So I'm going to take this as a speculation. Um, I don't think Entrancing Melody, I don't really want to take that, but yeah, pre Cognitive Perception, Omen of the Sea, could be signaling that blue-red is where I want to be, and that's that's quite fun. Three damage, I'm not going to have too many things to crew with this. Um, Omen of the Sea is fine. This is double blue. Five mana instant draw three. I'm going to take Omen of the Sea. It just smooths your draws. Okay, blue is I guess where we're supposed to be. Um, there's Agent of Treachery, way better than Thassa's Oracle. Finale of Promise. Um... I think honestly I like that a little bit less than just Sheltered Thicket in this deck. Some green cards, sure. Outpost Siege last pick. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. So we're in a weird position. I think blue-red is where we want to be. And that's probably where, where we are going to go towards. Uh, Sublime Epiphany is absurd. I know I just passed a big double blue card, but this is kind of why there's a lot better... like. Five mana to draw three instant speed is fine, but the fact that it doesn't do anything else makes it very narrow. Whereas Sublime Epiphany, it just does everything, especially if you can like copy an Agent of Treachery. Can you imagine? So I think I take that. Um, Scarab God's fine. Doom Scar is a good card. I actually like this quite a bit. And then Carries Out is for a different type of deck. Let's just take this. And I really want to avoid expensive spells from now on. Here we can take Glimmer of Genius versus Lava Coil. Um, I have quite a few fours, although this isn't the greatest outpost siege deck, so I could still see taking it, but I think I just like Lava Coil. I want to keep my cheap spells, and if I'm not playing black, then I really don't have any, like, early interactions. So I'm going to take this. Maybe Wheel Glimmer, uh, maybe Wheel Tome, like, they're both good options, and yeah, I think taking the one good red card and then trying to wheel some of the good blue cards just makes sense there. Lights to Pathway does give us black red. If we want to do go straight Grixis, I do love Midnight Clock. This really helps you in a controlling deck because it accelerates you, which a lot of the times, you know, if you're running Sublime Epiphany, Ugin, or whatever, you do want the acceleration, and then it just refills your hand. So I'm actually going to take that. So it's a card I, I think I value higher than most people, and I don't know what that says, but I like the card. Uh, Dead Weight, Dreadbore, Thing in the Ice. Is this Thing in the Ice deck? It's only instant or sorcery spells. I don't actually have that many of those. So probably not that. Honestly, I'm just going to take Dreadbore on the chance that I do end up going full Grixis. Because, like, I'm seeing some good things. I... Scorching Dragonfire, 2 damage to anything. Honestly, given what I'm seeing, Treasure Map makes sense. I love Obnixilis, but again, I don't know... Now my colors are weird because I'm in, like, Grixis-ish. But Treasure Map just helps fix that. It's a good early play. It gives us treasure tokens to cast if we do end up splashing. It's just a great enabler, and I value it very highly in lesser powerful formats. Uh, Temple of Deceit versus Narset. So Narset, I mean, this is not Vintage Cube, so Narset's not the most absurd play, but it is still very good. The downside of Narset is it's double blue on turn three, and my mana is very sketchy right now. A lot of my blue is like six and seven drops, so... I think I'm actually going to take this Temple of Deceit over Narset, just to like make sure I can cast my things. Um, ooh, I do like Noxious Gear Hulk, but Needle Verge... Oh, that looks like black, right? On the bottom it shows land. That definitely looks like it's a black-red land. Um, okay, well, given that that is not a card we can play, we could take the Gear Hulk, we could take Opt. Right now black is a very light splash, so maybe double blue isn't out of the question. I do you like Gear Hulk? Right now I have two black sources. I think I'm going to keep my black to a minimum and just take op. The other option is Chain Whirler. Chain Whirler is very good, but that's like even harder to cast. Oh, wow. Yeah, we are in the right colors. There's Colgon's Command, Magmatic Channeler. Ooh, that card's fun. Nezahal, Expressive Iteration, Stoke the Flames. All of these are sweet. 
Right now we have two creatures in there, Glorybringer, Agent of Treachery. So I think we're definitely just committing to Grixis. Uh, Colgon's Command is the best card in this pack by far. This, I mean, this deck looks fun. This, I might like this cube a lot. So you might see a lot of drafts of it from me because it's just interactive and it doesn't have all those like cheesy you win the game things of like Channel Emrakul or Natural Order Through the Breach, things like that. Here we get Castle Vantress versus If Near Deadlands. You can sacrifice this to put two counters on a creature. This gains control of a creature. That's really only good if you're trying to tempo your opponent out, I think. Because this is like a really delayed board wipe. I don't love that. Um, it's between Vantress and Deadlands. And I think I'm more likely going to play the Deadlands. Okay, Maze Mind Tome did come around. Um, there's Ulamog, Sphinx's Rev, but this is like two mana. And then you can spend two mana to draw a card and you can do that four times. Yeah, that seems great. So now we have our card advantage between Treasure Map, Maze Mind Tome, Midnight Clock. Our hand will be quite full. We get the Blight Step Pathway. Um, this is the black red one, right? Yeah, it's the same color. <laughs> yeah, it's the same color. I don't know what's going on there. But we take that. I'm playing Elpo Siege. What else is in my sideboard? I could potentially see playing Sheltered Thicket with an 18 land build because like of how my mana is. Timber Calls the Dead, Mill 3. Then you might exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. I don't have a lot of cards for that to hit, so I guess I just take a Bedlam Revel Reveler. Could see that getting there. Scorching Dragonfire. Sure. Well, we're set up against creature decks, particularly small creature decks, although I do have Heartless Act. Actually, no, this deck looks quite nice. I have, um, well, okay. <laughs> we're good against small creature decks, and that's about it. But if you're playing like a dirtily control deck, you want to see this. You want to see a lot of cards at the 1, 2, and 3 slots to make sure you don't get run over quickly. If there are board wipes in this format, like a, I don't think Black Sun Zenith would be in Pioneer, but uh, if there are board wipes in this format, something like that, uh, getting at least one of those would be useful. I guess like a Hyroclasm might work. I know I passed Goblin Chain Whirler, but that felt too hard for the mana. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, Sublime Epiphany Agent of Treachery is a pretty good late game, though. Sure, I'll take a Stormwing Entity. That might actually get in the deck. So we can just like opt, cast a 3 mana 3-3 three, three flyer, scry 2. Not opposed. Well, red is open. Last pick, Flame Wake Phoenix. Not necessarily the deck for it. I think I have one 4 power creature, but could be good. You never know. Also, Karn with Treasure Map is pretty nice. If you make the treasures, suddenly your Karn tokens are like 15-15 15, 15 power toughness. That's not actually true, but it's about that. I like Temple of Malice, Gaunty... Fun, but kind of hard to cast. Iron Craig Pyromancer could get good, um, but I think I'm just going to take the Temple, really cement our deck. Like, we have a lot of cheap interactions, so having tap lands... The, the biggest downside with tap lands is if you have a lot of, like, three and four mana plays, and then you have to play a tap land on turn three, you're missing out on, like, two mana. But if you can play a tap land turn one, cast a two drop, or, like, play a tap land turn three and cast a two drop, you're just not missing out on as much mana, so the cost is much lower. Um, and I don't think we need Magma Spray. We have quite a bit of those types of things. Ooh, Blood Crypt. I love a Blood Crypt. Sensor I love as well. Um, <laughs> this is going to be challenging. But we have so many playables, right? We have 21 playables already. I'm just going to like guarantee that my mana is absolutely perfect with a Blood Crypt. And then uh, Fiery Impulse to a creature. This can be 3 damage to a creature. Otherwise, there's Thunderbreak Regent, which actually does combo with Glorybringer. Uh, Quicken, I don't really have any sorceries, right? I guess just Dreadbore Lava Coil? I guess the question is, do I want Pull From tomorrow to make sure I have, like, late game mana, or cards? I don't think I really need that, right? I have Chandra, Karn, Midnight Clock, all of this. I don't think I need that. I'm just gonna take a Fiery Impulse. Ooh, Jace is great. P and Kieran is great. Hieroglyphic Illumination, great. Um, this is... Pretty slow, right? Four damage. Yeah, I don't love that. I mean, this is just an excellent Jace deck. If they don't kill him, we can just start flashing things back, and that's going to get out of control very quickly. The fact that Jace is in Pioneer is very strange to me. But right now we have 31 total, minus 8 is 23. So this is just our deck. Okay. I mean, I would play this deck as is. It's perfect. But we'll see what else we get. Ooh, Extinction Event could be helpful. Neutralize, I actually like. The double blue is a little bit hard to cast, but I think probably just going to go for a Sulphur Falls. Just playing like actual Constructed over here seems fun to me. Basically, like if your deck has enough playables, right? I could take Neutralize. I'd probably put it in the deck because having at least one Counterspell matters. But because we already have enough playables, 
it's much more likely that having a dual land will help our deck out more. And now, and now I can really afford those double blue costs because we just have like everything. I might not play this, although we could just flex all the non-basics here and just <laughs> play it for fun. Um, I don't know if I can quite afford Jace Wheeler of Mysteries. There's an is it charm, two damage to a creature, counter a non-creature spell or draw two, discard two I like. Cyclonic Rift is okay. It's quite a bit better when you're, you know, presenting a board presence, um, which we're not going to be doing. We're just going to be very reactive. I mean, Jace is a fun win condition, but that means we would have to actually beat their entire deck. I like it. Especially in some matchups, like, if we are playing against another Dirtly deck, we're going to be really happy we have Jace. Uh, ooh. Could I, uh... Could I play Yorian? How many... Well, do I have anything that's good with Yorian? Omen of the Sea, Agent of Treachery, pretty much just those two. I don't love it. I can play the Triome instead of Sheltered Thicket, I suppose. That just makes sense. And now the Revelation. Draw X cards. If X is 10 or more, instead shuffle your graveyard in your library, draw X cards, untap up to 5 lands, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Ooh. But there's also a Canyon Slew. I'm just, I'm a sucker for value. We're taking Canyon Slew. Our mana is just going to be actually perfect. Radical Idea is probably a good one, right? Discard another card and pay its costs, then exile it. I like that. Iron Creek Pyromancer also could get really good in this deck. We can go super deep because we just have so many cheap spells. Why is this? Whoa. <laughs> when you click over here, it shows up. So it's it's between the Pyromancer and Radical Idea. It is also an 0-4 that does block pretty nicely. I don't think I need the, the jump start, to be honest. We get Sensor. Perfect. Sensor is awesome here. Just the ability to cycle it is so useful. Uh, Heart of Kirin. I don't really think I need. I'll just take Sensor. A great card. Um, take Temple Garden so nobody else has it. Showdown of the Scalds, no. Thundering Rebuke, I guess if I need to do four is good. I could also take a Mobilized District, but I'll just take this in case they have a lot of Chunky Boys. Cavalier of Gales I might main deck. It is a good, we get, is it Charm? <laughs> we, we, oh my gosh, we have way too many playables here. Um, what do I get rid of? I think the Pyromancer starts in the sideboard probably. And is it Charm will bring in against decks with a lot of non-creatures. This is what I'm feeling for the main deck. This is still 26 in the main. Uh, Cavalier of Gales, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five flying, brainstorm on enter. I have a lot of black-red fixing, but not necessarily an easy way to cast these two cards. This makes my mana just, like, unbeatable. 24 playables. I can cut Bedlam Reveler, right? This is discard your hand, then draw 3. It is big. It's a 3-4 prowess. But, like, look at, look at this curve. Optus, Finger, Fiery, Sensor, Jace, Omen, Heartless Act. Just like all beautiful, beautiful removal, and then we shuffle it all back with Midnight Clock. Yeah, I'm on board with this, as it is. Um, do I want to run If Near Deadlands? Because it does hurt me. It's also not a swamp. I don't think so. So this is <laughs> this is some good fixing, I tell you what. Uh, two, two, three. Right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's a red. Yeah, I have nine red sources already. So, I think I just need like two. Let's count blue. One, two, three, four. Um, okay, let's count black. One, two. Oh, I don't want sheltered thicket, I don't think. Yeah, I don't want that many tap lands. Okay, um, red. I can run like one mountain. Swamps, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Honestly, I don't think I need a single swamp. Six is great. Blue, we have one, two, three, four. Four blue. I need more like seven. Seven blue seems okay. Um, I can even go up like this. Yeah, I don't think I need a single basic swamp here. 38. So right now I have one, two, three, four. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight blue sources for this splash seems pretty good. Uh, this is going to cost three mana almost all the time. You know, I wonder if Iron Creek Pyromancer is just better than Stormwing Entity here. Because like... I can double spell so often in this deck, or even just like putting in Jace and just calling it a day. This dies, shuffle it into, oh, actually I like that. It's a, it's a repeatable threat. So I actually like that. I'm going to add another island and another mountain. So now my red sources are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11. And then my blue is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then my black is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Yeah, that all seems actually perfect to me. I'm going to run it like this. Our deck looks so sweet. I will see you guys run one. Oh, right, we're playing against MTG Fanatic. This hand looks fantastic. We'll keep... We need the blue mana, but we have like eight islands. Ooh, opponent knows what's up. All right, deck, island on top. Colgon's Command. I'm actually going to scry that to the bottom because short term or long term that might be good, but... The way we lose this is not hitting a third land on time. So we just have to like get through as many cards as possible to guarantee we can hit land three on turn three, especially a blue source. So we can like censor their four mana planeswalker if they have something like that. Although we do have Dreadboard and Exquisite Firecraft, so the planeswalkers aren't as scary, I guess. There is the Sulfur Fall. So this enters untapped if you control a mountain. So we can do this, play the Maze Mind Tome, pass turn. Um it depends on what I see from them, whether or not I scry or I save the charge counters to start drawing, because it's looking like they're not playing too quickly. We're just going to wait and just draw cards. I think that seems like the best option in a grindy matchup like this. This card seems very good. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're playing a lot of colors. Let's make sure we don't yield through the turn. And I'm just going to draw treasure map. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to scry on my upkeep now. I really would like to <laughs> hit a land. Especially now that I have treasure map, which is a lot of card advantage as well. Like, I, I don't need that much more. These cards are great when you draw, like, one. But I keep, like, if you draw both that are a bit... Uh, oh, definitely bottom that. Um, any, anyway, yeah. If you draw both, they're a bit awkward. But that's okay. I might just Omen of the Sea if I don't hit a land in my draw step. But I hit a land, so everything is perfect. I can go land, treasure map, hold up sensor. If they don't make play anything worth censoring. And now we're in great shape. We just have, like... Crazy amounts of card advantage in play. My opponent hasn't done anything. Underworld connection. Um, okay. I mean, that's a bit awkward. I can censor it to deny them a card draw, but I think that's okay. Censor will have value later. And we, like, yes, they do have a land that taps a draw card, but we also just have crazy ability to draw cards. Um, honestly, I don't mind that. I just need to, like, continue hitting lands, and this does that. Although I maybe, no, I have double blue. Okay, I was going to say, I might be in a position where I would like maybe consider the need to dig for Sublime Epiphany or something like that. Because I really don't have great counter magic, but I think we're okay. Because like, yeah, our opponent, they also have to lose life when they do this. Dusk Legion Zealot is fine. Also losing life. Are they going to discard like three cards to hand size? Okay, that's fine with me. Um, so let's treasure map. Card on top seems, hmm, can't hold up sensor. I'll put him on top. Maze Mind Tome, let's draw. They discard two. Oh, I could have uh, disfigured the Dusk Legion Zealot, but I didn't want to like give them the opportunity to use their mana. Um, I guess I can, I think I'm just going to draw naturally, because if I hit an untapped land, everything goes perfectly. And if I don't, like, I don't have to play Karn here. Perfect. Okay. So now we go mountain. One, two, three. Like Canyon Slew better than we play Karn. I'm going to make a 3 3 with Karn, to be honest. Uh, start getting in there. And I can pump it up at instant speed with Treasure Map. So if they have like Lightning Bolt, I can just flip Treasure Map and then I'll have five treasure tokens and then it's going to be a 5 5. They have Cling to Dust, Guilt Leaf Winnower. Hmm, okay. Discarding Cling to Dust is interesting, but I guess I have no cards in my graveyard. I really hope they lightning bolt the construct. Dreadbore my Karn. Okay, well I got the value as I needed. I don't have anything. They have to discard the hand size again? Okay, fine with that. End of turn, let's draw a card. Gain some life. We draw Jace. Um, on upkeep, do I scry? Yeah, because I want to have a land drop here, I think. They discard Hydroid Crisis. Let's scry. Double of Deceit, sure. That flips. I mean, look, this is disgusting. We have like 10 for one to our opponent because they're discarding the hand size. Now we're just digging for like, Glorybringer would be pretty good. Um, I think I actually bought him that. We, we can get action. Um, let's attack for four. Do I let them chump block or do I just disfigure the Dusk Legion Zealot? I can go disfigure, Dave's Prince Prodigy and Sensor. I think I'm just gonna let them chump. It saves them four life. Basically, do I want to turn Disfigure into 4 damage to the face? Actually, kind of. I have Exquisite Firecraft. Yeah, let's attack. I'll just kill this. 
This also gets us a lot closer towards flipping Jace, which would be really good. Because yeah, I could just go hit them, Firecraft, flashback Firecraft, and they just die. Especially if they want to keep using their land to draw cards. Like, this is really, really bad for them. The deck looks fun. Just their mana fixing looks abysmal. Fatal push my Jace. Fine. Nothing I can do about that except draw Colgon's command, but I think that's on the bottom of my deck. When it draws a tapped land, I will play Omen of the Sea end of turn. Honestly, I'm going to bottom both of these. I want proactive plays. Okay, um, I will scry in my upkeep, I think. Bottom both of these, and we just went through so many lands, which is great. Now we draw Agent of Treachery. I can steal a land. Wait, I, <laughs> I can steal their card draw land. Oh my goodness. Let's attack them for four. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I kind of like that. I like that a lot. Blue, this, this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cast him. Yoink. <laughs> Thank you. I can still hold up center with my treasure tokens. I love that this guy is any permanent. Stealing lands is one of the best feelings ever. They do hit an untapped land, but they're out of blue. So we'll see what happens. I'm imagining sensor is going to end up decent in this position. Ooh, a morph, okay. So we just kill the morph. I mean, opponent's very dead in many different ways. They also just showed me their morph, which is good. Like, it's just good to know what they have. I'm guessing it's the creature that returns cards from graveyard. Kill this and see what happens. Yeah, Den Protector. So they get back, like, Fatal Push, probably. Interesting. Guilt Leap Winnower. I guess that makes sense. But now we just kill them. I want to draw a card because it's more fun. Firecraft, your face. Uncounterable. Boom. Okay, so they're like 15 color control, but they have quite a few creatures. So I don't hate my creature, like, base. But I see that. I saw quite a bit of removal from them, too. All right, run it back. Next, perfect. I don't know why my cards got very small. Get bigger. Okay, um, this hand is awesome. Definitely great. Turn one temple, turn two blood crypt, untapped scorching dragon fire. One, it has the canyon slew again. And they're playing. Yeah, temple of deceit tapped. I even pulls up with that on top, actually. That's just a lot of cheap interactive spells are really good with midnight clock, too, because I, I want to play midnight clock soon. Uh, do I want to play blood crypt tapped or untapped? I think I'm just going to play mountain for now. I can defer that decision. We can get down Omen of the Sea. Romantic, ooh. Now I like their deck a lot more. If I had Sensor here, it would be unbelievably good, but that's okay. Dreadbore Island. Bottom that, I will keep a Dreadbore in case they have Planeswalkers. We have Colgan's Command. Lava Coil. All right, that's, that's quite a bit of removal. Um, let's just hope they have a lot of creatures. Let's see, like a Guilt Leaf Winnower or something. Just a creature. I just... As long as they're playing creatures, I'm happy. Okay. I mean, that will be a creature. A very large creature. Not as happy about that one. And this enters untapped if you have four or more lands. Okay. Man, they are... <laughs> yeah, we might be in a bit of trouble in this position. Um, I can't scry with Omen of the Sea because I can't Colgon's Command in the same turn. Draw land. Let's play Blood Crypt tapped. Last turn. Yeah, now we're in trouble. We just have... Well, it depends on... I don't know what their win cons are, but if they're just like a bunch of Beanstalk Giants, we can beat that. But if it's like a bunch of Ugins, we can Dreadbore one, we can Exquisite Firecraft, Scorching Dragonfire another, but then things get awkward. Does this exile itself? It does, okay. This looks like a lot of mana. Okay, Hydroid Crisis. We can Lava Coil. They do draw two cards, though, so it's like a really fancy Moldrifter. Try bottom this. I'll put opt on top, I guess. A charge counter. Let us lava coil this thing. It exiles. Play land. We can opt. I guess at this point, basically, we need to beat their entire deck. That's that's what we need to do. Is somehow find a way to kill every single thing they play, and then just go from there. It's easy. Um, I could opt into sensor depending on what this is. All right, I'm definitely going to try and opt into sensor. Chandra Pyromancers. What does he do? Exile the top card of each player's library. You may cast them at any time. So they could just exile my Midnight Clock. I guess I'll draw Chandra because she gives me long-term value. But this is pretty brutal. Sensor there would have been nice. 
Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So now they can just cast that at any time. Um, at least I can kill their Tybalt. But now my late game card advantage is gone. So now we're in deep trouble. One, two, three, four, five. All right, well, let's Chandra and try it at a land, I suppose. I uh, I should have held up red. That was a mistake. Land? Nice. Go ahead. Now I can Agent of Treachery the Beanstalk Giant. Then they can like Guilt Leaf Winnower my Agent of Treachery. Okay, they Dreadbore, Chandra. At least I got a land out of it. Yeah, I mean, I have to kill that because they're just going to reshuffle. Or does it say it's owners? No, shuffle your. Oh gosh. Yeah, really messed up by not having red available. They can get back Dreadbore now. Oh wait, I can Agent of Treachery the Midnight Clock. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's the play. That feels like the play. One, two, three, four, five. We play Glorybringer, they get back Dreadboar to kill the Glorybringer. But this seems like a good place for it here. Yeah, I think we like wait for this to level up a bit and then we just steal it and then we shuffle our graveyard back in. <laughs> that can exert, goodbye. Um, I need to hit one more mana source to be able to Agent of Treachery though. Ooh, they get back and read the bones, okay. They read the bones. I mean, their life total is getting lower, but I don't think it's like crazy low. 14. Guilt Leaf Winnower does not kill Glorybringer. District Guide gets a land. Not too concerned about that at the moment. I'm not going to Fiery Impulse just yet. That goes up. Rill of Possibility. Hmm. I kind of want to discard this Fiery Impulse. And the reason for doing this now is, yeah, this. Because now I can start, like, treasure mapping. I have Disfigure to kill the District Guide, so we're in a similar position. I can start scrying for lands to Agent of Treachery, because Midnight Clock, they're going to level it up here. It goes up to four, five. It's each player's. It's going to go up to six. So I need to steal it. Oh, they're just doing that. That's okay. Um, given that, I think I do Disfigure the District Guide. Although there's no reason to do it right now. The other option is stealing Beanstalk Giant, but I don't love that. So let's turn off auto yields. I'm going to play around Sensor and just kill this now. I don't know if there's like Ninjutsu cards in the format or whatever, but that would be pretty unfortunate to get hit by Ninjutsu. Now they'd probably play the Beanstalk Giant as a 10-10. I really, really like the idea of stealing that instead of Midnight Clock. He's mine top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, yeah, so... How soon is this going to level up? So this is going to be 5, they can put up to 6. On their turn it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it'll change on my turn. So if they go all in on Midnight Clock, they can get a reshuffle. I think I would have bottomed this. Just draw naturally. Heartless Act works too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes. Crazy how hard it is to hit land drops. Um, pass turn. So we can Heartless Act the Beanstalk Giant. And the reason I didn't scry on upkeep is I need an untapped land to be able to cast agent. So if they go all in here, they can reshuffle their thing. So I guess I just kill this now. Destroy target creature. Because I don't really want them reshuffling a beanstalk giant. Dusk Legion Zealot is fine. So now I think one... How much mana they have left? I don't think they're activating Midnight Clock. Grey Merchant, I don't care about at all. I think we're actually in good position. As long as they don't have counter magic. But their deck is not very heavy blue. Dry. And even if we miss a land, we can still... Okay, that goes on top. Goes up to eight. Yeah, I was saying, even if we miss a land, we can still agent by using the treasure tokens, but we don't have the need now. This is going to steal this. They should tap it. Okay, they kill that, but that doesn't prevent me from getting Midnight Clock back. They didn't tap it. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, that's glorious. All right, go ahead. So now I get three treasure tokens. They only have two cards in hand. I'm at 17. That's a very healthy life total. They do that. Okay, so that's good. That's not uh, seven cards in one turn, but it's still a lot of card draw. Scry. Um, actually, I'll wait for them to attack and stuff. I don't know if Ninjutsu is in this format. I don't know what's in Pioneer. I've never looked at the format, but if Fallen Shinobi's in here, I'm going to scream. Okay. <laughs> and that's why I didn't want to scry in case they do fall in Shinobi. Oh, yes. That is a beautiful magic card. I don't have a creature to make copies of, but that's fine. So we just need to like spew off all of our cards here. We can go 
red boar on the gray merchant. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we can firecraft their face. Red, red, blue. I still have Sublime Epiphany at the ready if needed. Oh, I guess I could have also, if I had drawn it, Sublime Epiphany the Midnight Cock. That'd be interesting. Take the hit. The way they're attacking makes me think there's Ninjutsu, but they're just like pausing awkwardly. They only have nine cards left in their deck. Wait, I just realized they're like dead. <laughs> All right, that seems good. So if they try and kill Midnight Clock, I believe I can put an hour counter on it in response. No, okay, so I'm just gonna hold up Sublime Epiphany. I'm not gonna activate it now. That way if they try and kill it with the 12th counter on the stack. All right, so now we add blue here and I just reshuffle. Sweet, and now I can opt. It's not the best hand, but I have my whole deck back. So I think we're in good shape. Who's the Firecraft seems good. Put that on top. Real possibility is excellent here, so let's start with that, I suppose. Real possibility discarding an island. Polygon's command Ugin. I like all of this. Um, kind of just want to play Ugin. One, two, three, four, five. Um, do I need to play Ugin? Let's play Omen of the Sea and what, see what happens there. Play this. Play this. Age of Treachery is not exiled, so I could just re-hit that and steal their Underworld connection again. All right, well, opponent stalled for like five minutes or something, just wasted a bit of time, but uh, they concede the match. I would have conceded in that spot as well, but it's unfortunate. I had so much sweet stuff I was going to do. Anyway, see you guys next round. All right, we're playing against Cookie Kid 0 0. Um, I'm going to go first. This is a deck that like really doesn't mind going first or second, although we will be mulliganing this hand. This one's good, though. Uh, what do we get rid of? We're keeping this. I have treasure map. Um, I think I'm just going to get rid of Sublime Epiphany for now. There's like, no, there's tap. It just, it just doesn't make too much sense to keep a six mana play in hand right now, because we just want to have cheap interaction. I guess I, <laughs> Sublime Epiphany is the only one I can cast in the main deck right now, so maybe that was a mistake. Oh, but I have Sensor. We're going to hold up Sensor for a little bit, because getting down Treasure Map seems like very valuable, and I can still scry with Treasure Map and censor next turn. Whereas like if I don't censor, like if I hold up censor this turn, then if I don't counter anything and I want a treasure map, what do I even do? Okay, they have cultivate. Make censor a little bit worse, quite a bit worse. Um, but if they go for like five mana Nissa now, and they're mono green, okay. Do I scry on upkeep? I think so. We really wanna well, it's kind of hard to say because I would like lands and spells. I'm just scrying like, ooh, I do like that. Although I have Coligon's command. I think I'm actually going to bottom that. The goose is no longer as scary because they've cracked the clue. And I can kill it with Coligon's command. I know Visionary is fine. Okay, so they're just going to make a thing. Let's scry. Actually, no, let's just draw naturally. Triome enters tapped. Island Mountain Plains. So let's make cast Chandra. I think I will play that. And we pass turn holding up Sensor and Treasure Map Cycle. It really shows them that I'm potentially bluffing a counter spell. They also forgot to make a Goose token, so that's good for me. Gives me that free Sensor value. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> got him. No, they have Landlord Visionary! Ah, oh, I'm the one who has got. Never mind, never mind. Put that on the bottom. This is actually bad. I'm so used to, yeah, I, I just forgot this tap for mana. Well, now we're in trouble. I can Chandra, I have Colgan's command. I do want to scry again. We need to hit something here. Mountain, we can bottom that. We can cast Opt into Dreadbore, yes. I can Dreadbore that. Black, red, kill this. Play land, pass turn. Oh, got out of that barely. So now Treasure Cove can start drawing me cards. Chandra can start drawing me cards. This is a very expensive spell. The Great Henge. Okay, well, Colgon's Command makes that... No, they have a spell? Orc Hide Troll is fine. So we're definitely going to Colgon's Command killing the Great Henge. And probably Land War Visionary. Um, yeah, black, red, blue. Colgon's Command. Destroy Great Henge, two damage to this. And I'm going to draw a card. Lava Coil seems better than Heartless Act. I'm going to do that right now, right? They don't have the mana to remove a counter. Let's just kill this. Okay, 
we are still in it somehow. But opponent has four cards in hand, which is really scary. Hopefully they play a one toughness creature. Nope, Kazandu Mammoth. Okay, well I can kill that with Heartless Act. Ronus, can't attack or block unless you control a creature with power four or greater. So basically if they play a land that will activate Kazandu Mammoth. Interesting. Let me play it this turn. Yeah, I'm kind of scared to activate Chandra because if I hit my... Oh, we still go for it. One, two, three, four. Let's play Chandra. Or do I wait? I think I want to uptick. Just go up there, there. Play this as a black source. And we're going to Heartless Act the Kazandu Mammoth. Yeah, okay. No Courser, please don't hit a land. They hit a land and it's Castle Garenberg as well. All right, we're in some amount of trouble. I can still Heartless Act the Mammoth. How we destroy this. Um, they can pump up the Gilded Goose once, but Rona still can't attack. I guess they could pump up uh, Corsair of Crufix. Yeah, and then Rona's can kill Chandra. So that's pretty unfortunate. And I don't know if my deck really has a way to deal with Ronus. He dies. Let's draw. Okay, so I can Omen of the Sea. Goodbye, Chandra. This is a great game so far. Very interactive. Um, they have more? Okay. <laughs> A lot of mana, I mean, Ronus is just going to kill me very quickly, so I need to deal with all these other nonsense creatures. Let's Omen of the Sea. Actually, I guess we draw for turn. One, two, three. Because I could draw Ugin. Um, I can draw Ugin. This gives Trample, right? Yeah. So what happens here? They have seven mana. This is just to activate abilities. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this gives them effectively an extra two, three, one mana. So they have eight, nine mana. They can activate Ronus three times. Uh, Ugin, for some reason, doesn't dis exile. He just destroys. I think I need to Omen of the Sea into something here. Disfigure Midnight Clock. Um, Disfigure helps slightly. I wish I could keep both. I think I have to bottom both. Okay, we'll play Karn. And Karn can make a 1-1 one, one blocker. No, let's just up to Karn. What do we hit? Exquisite Firecraft, Bloodcraft. Well, I can play this tapped. Um, I might just be dead though. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if they just swing out at my face, I take 15 damage here. That's pretty fun. But they're probably going to kill Karn with these two and then I take 5. Interesting. Okay, I only take 4, I guess. Incubation Druid. Now would be a great time to draw that creature that steals stuff. Temple of Malice. Alright, let's scry. There he is. Put him on top. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can play Ugin. Um, this just gives plus X plus O. So I think I do want to just uptick Ugin. We're going to get Agent of Treachery back. And that can at least like trade for something. And it makes them have to do a lot of work to actually kill with Ugin. Or to, to actually kill Ugin if they want to go for that. And then I can cast Agent of Treachery stealing Ronus. And then their board state is not... Incredible, although it's very good. Um, this adds green? No, <laughs> doesn't add green. But I still think I need to deal Ronus, most likely. This is a 2-3, so that does block a lot of things. Well, they're not attacking with Ronus, which is good. That was a big punt by the opponent. What are they doing? Attacking Ugin with both? So we can even keep Ugin in play. Nice. Block here. Get back to this guy. They have no cards in hand. They're top-decking Whisperwood Elemental. Oh no, we can't keep Ugin. He takes five here. Jeez, they top deck Whisperwood Elemental. <laughs> I don't know about this one. They're uh, they're drawn live. All right, I need to draw a removal spell in addition to Agent. <clears throat> Not that one. Three, four, five, six, seven. Play this. Short term, this works. We have to take this because this is just like representing so much total damage. Um, I cannot thrill of possibility. But if I hit Sublime, <laughs> they're top decking Nissa now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it's the bad Nissa though. Honestly, Sublime Epiphany still gives us outs. Like, we, we have quite a few outs, and Thrill of Possibility gives us multiple draws at it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage so far. 14 damage. And we have to take it because I need Agent of Treachery in play for Sublime Epiphany to be good. All right, deck. 
Um, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four. So I cannot Omen of the Sea and Thrill of Possibility into Sublime Epiphany. So I think I just draw naturally. I draw a Glory Bringer, which lets Ronus attack and block. So we definitely do this. Um, now I can attack with Ronus. I think I have to exert and kill Whisperwood because that is the largest attacker they have. They're drawing Kogla. <laughs> oh my gosh, this fights right. I'm super dead. <laughs> I can't beat a Kogla. I didn't see that. We kill the Whisperwood, but then they're just going to play Kogla, kill my Glorybringer, and then kill me. So, oh, and then they get a land on top. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, but we have game two, and we can sideboard appropriately. I think our 0-4 that does three damage whenever you cast your second spell is going to be quite good in this. I think I'm dead, though. Right, right there. Yeah, I just die. Okay. So, game two. Definitely bringing in the Pyromancer, Thundering Rebuke, because I like those. Kulagon's Command, they do have the Great Hand, so I kind of need that. Um... A Sauce Sensor, it's unlikely to be super great against them, honestly. Although they, it's so good early. And if I just played it correctly and cycled it, I think we'd be in much, much better shape. Lord's Fury, Creatures of Control gain first strike. That's not going to matter. No, I think I do get rid of Sensor because it's good with Chandra, or it's bad with Chandra. And then I just have a ton of removal. Um, Kind of could see getting rid of Karn, but it's kind of necessary. Wi-Fi Flyer. I guess I cut Thrill of Possibility and run it like that. All right, let's do this. Play Sensor correctly. This hand has no blue, but I think it's keepable. I just have so much like early interaction. Go ahead. And if I just draw up to lands for Karn, we're in business. We're running 17 land. I don't know. Two land keeps are always a little bit sketchy. Opponent plays Oath of Nissa. I hope they're not splashing like a Nicol Bolas in there somewhere. That would be unfortunate. When it reveals Landlord Visionary, pretty good against my deck. Ooh, Cannon Slew is pretty nice. Play that. Play Incubation Druid. Um, can Lava Coil that? I think I'm going to. And we just play Blood Crypt Tapped. I just want to set up for having Karn in play, ready to go. Ooh, and they're missing land drops. Okay. Please don't hit a land. Corsair of Crufix. Okay, so we can kill that one as well. Oh, they just get rid of it. Okay, they're stuck on land. This is actually quite... No, they're not stuck on land. Never mind. They just have a tapped land. Holgon's Command. I can kill that, but I really probably want to save this for the Great Hand. So, uh, I have plenty of red. Honestly, I'm just going to play the red side. Let's go ahead and play Karn. Karn goes up to six. Um, I want to hit a land so I can go like Scorching Dragonfire plus Colgon's Command or something. Those are two good cards for me to choose from. Experiment 1 is fine. Archive Troll also not the end of the world. Karn takes 3. Wow. Alright, uptick Karn. I would really like to hit a land drop here. Because right now I actually cannot double spell. Yeah. Show me lands. No lands. Okay. Yeah, that's unreal. I, <laughs> I've drawn 15 cards. Uh, I guess it's not that out of the ordinary. Um... Yeah, if I could just play anything here. So I guess I just have to hold up Scorching Dragonfire and hope that they... Well, they're just going to attack Karn with a Barkhide Troll, I think, which makes it much harder. Yeah. All right, let's play Maze Mind Tome. Last turn. And if they swing all out at Karn, that's still not the end of the world for me. So we'll see how they attack. I think they just want to right-click attack all at Karn because he has so much value. Yeah, so we just let Karn die. Because I can't save him. And then we see what comes down. Okay, what is this? Four, four mana, four, four. It makes two cat creature tokens. Whenever it attacks, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. Well, it's not going to evolve anything. I can also kill that with Kolagon's command, I guess. Let's scry one and see what we're hitting. <laughs> Inter's tapped, but it does give me the blue that I need. Honestly, I think I... Is it greedy to bottom that? I don't think so. We bottom that, and we dragon fire the troll. And do I scry on upkeep? I think I do. This is one there's four. Yeah, let's scry on upkeep. I really want to hit an untapped land here. Okay, sure. Now I get to go 
treasure map, and then Kolgon's command, killing the chariot after they try and crew it. This is quite the game. I mean, we've <laughs> we're both stuck on lands, um, which means our hands are just full of spells. Questing beast is unreally really good. Okay, questing beast it is. That evolves experiment one. Um, how greedy do I want to get? Because experiment one's gonna continue getting bigger. I can just Kolgon's command killing experiment one the chariot. I think I let it grow. And now they decide, do they crew the chariot? Yes. Okay, so let's Kolgon's command. Two damage, or kill this, two damage to Merfolk Branchwalker. So now I only take seven damage this turn. Still not great, but now I can Exquisite Firecraft the Questing Beast, and if I can top deck a blue source here, two, three, one, two. So I can Treasure Map first because I need to hit blue, and that gives me five mana total. Chandra Pyromancer, I don't actually like. Then we scry here. That on the bottom, this is unreal. Island. <laughs> oh my gosh. Kill this. Play this tapped. What are three, four, five, six, seven? I'm going pretty low. I can use like all of my treasures. This gains me life, right? Yeah, so that's something, I guess. But I'm just like so far on the back foot because I cannot find a single blue source here that we're in deep trouble, especially if they're going to cast six mana worth of creatures. Yikes. Yeah, their hand is just nonstop gas. I don't think I'm winning this. I mean, I would need to draw something pretty spectacular here. Let's scry. <laughs> I don't even know if that's good now. <laughs> like, what can I hit in this position to win? It would have been Sublime Epiphany, but I just don't have the blue mana. I've gone through, I mean, I've scryed like so many times. I can't believe I didn't hit blue earlier. Because if Jace was able to flip at any point, I would be winning this game. But if I put blue on top, the black here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 79, I just die. So I have to bottom that. And I just have to draw naturally, I think. Because I'm probably going to have to draw... <laughs> draw a card here. I gain four. I need to hit blue mana. This this draw step now. And that way I can go Midnight Clock into Jace. I gain four. I think I'm still like just dead. But yeah. All right. Good games, opponent. <laughs> Super brutal. See you guys next round. Oh, right. We're playing against this. the That guy. Uh, we're on the play. We're definitely going first. Definitely keeping this hand. It's just, oh, it's beautiful. Do we need lands? Yes. Does our hand do stuff? Only if they're playing a creature deck. We want to play against like mono white. That's, that's the dream matchup. I'm putting any lands on top. Island is perfect. Okay, blue white is scarier. I don't think four spike is in pioneer. So we can go blue to bluff the counter spell. Um, I probably will discard Ugin. He's like one of my very few win conditions, but Ooh, banned colors. We'll see what happens here. Lotus Cobra is definitely just going to get eaten, but they've already played a land. I think I am going to discard. <sighs> Ugin's so good, but he has six mana. I could get very greedy and discard a land, but I think I'm just going to disfigure the Lotus Cobra and then draw for turn. Okay, well now I don't think I have any double black, but I guess I need red for some of the lands enter tapped unless you have a mountain in hand. I'll just play this as red and pass turn. I'm very tempted to Thrill of Possibility away this mountain, but I might just save Thrill of Possibility for the late game because my hand is quite good. And if opponent doesn't do anything here, I don't really need to do too much. Everyone's playing five colors these days. I know we're visionary. I think this feels like a pretty good time to resolve a Karn and just uptick the Karn. Yeah, it, it feels a bit too greedy to Thrill of Possibility. Um, it'd probably give me Cavalier, because I can never cast that card. That's a good one to discard, maybe. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Gave me the mountain. Okay, Momnath. They can play land. We can Lava Coil Omnath, and it gets exiled, which is pretty useful. Game Trail tapped, gains four life. Okay, it's a good thing we did not leave them with Lotus Cobra. Okay, we draw a mountain. Let's uptick card again. Treasure map, Frost Boil Snarl. Ooh. I'll play the Frost Boil Snarl. They gotta give me Treasure Map, right? Or, no, they gotta give me the Snarl. And now I have a good use for Thrill of Possibility, because I think I would have missed my fourth land drop had I discarded. They gave me Treasure Map. That's crazy. All right, well, let's uh, Lava Coil this guy. Play land and play Treasure Map holding up Black Red. Seems good. Now I can start making Karn tokens to block the Land War Visionary. 
Felidar Retreat. So we can Ugin the Felidar Retreat. Because that seems like probably something. Well, I don't know. Ugin, I could just block the creatures. Um, okay. <laughs> they went all in on the lands. They make a cat. They make a cat. Yeah, now it's getting a little bit precarious. Sensor, I don't think I need any more. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm not going to scry because I just want to play Ugin this turn, probably. Let's go island. Play Ugin. We're going to uptake Ugin. Land, and then Karn is going to make a construct. So if they have the ability to play a bunch of lands this turn and make their things into like 4-4s, four this gets pretty sketchy. But if we can survive one turn, then I think we're in great shape. And by waiting, this thrill of possibility has gotten way, way better. Because we know like what we want, what we don't want. We know we have enough lands, so we can trade it for something more valuable in the future. The fact that they're playing Mystic pre-combat means they're going to pump their team, which makes my blocks rough. But I'm not opposed to double blocking this Land War Visionary. We'll see how they attack. Ugin, Ugin. Oh, they're just attacking Ugin with everything? Okay. Um, Ugin, Ugin, Ugin. So no matter what, he goes to two and cannot kill Felidar Retreat. Ugin, Ugin, Ugin. I think I'm just going to take it because uh, the Construct gets bigger. If I can make another one next turn, they'll both be three threes. Now we're going to scry and upkeep. That on the bottom for sure. Draw Blood Crypt. I think I'm going to... I like double blue. We're going to Thrill of Possibility away this mountain. Okay, that's pretty bad. I mean, we tried. Um, Karn is going to make a Construct. Uh, actually, let's, let's Omen of the Sea first to see if I can hit like a removal spell, because that would be really helpful. I like both of these quite a bit. Up top. Um, I guess there's no point in playing Temple of Deceit because I know I want it. So let's go make a Cornstruct and play Blood Crypt Tap. Last turn. Oh no, there's something end of turn. Oh geez, what is this much mana? Sphinx's Rev? No, God. Oh, we're so dead. Because now they've hit a land drop. Almost, well, I guess it's not guaranteed, but it's highly likely they have found a land in this process. But we're basically setting it up so that we can Agent of Treachery their Felidar Retreat and then just start going off ourselves. Because these constructs, once the treasure map flips, are going to become 6-6s, six I think, which is quite large. I don't like this. How much... Oh, no! <laughs> they have their own. We're in deep trouble now. They steal our Karn. Okay. Then they play a land and pump their team. Last pool mystic as a copy of creature you control. <laughs> no. No. Oh, they could copy Agent of Treachery. Oh, geez. All right, well. Oh, they're making a cat. Wait, that works out well, I think. Okay, that could have gotten worse, actually. Let's... I know the top card. I'm going to draw it. And I guess we have to Firecraft the Karn. That way they can't get their Exiled Glass Pool Mimic, which is going to copy Agent of Treachery. One, two, three, four. Um, we're just going to play Island. I think there's a decent chance that I have to Sublime Epiphany this turn just to survive. Okay, their team gets bigger, so we're going to make some constructs bigger. We're going to swing out for a whole bunch. Let's treasure map. If they sublime epiphany my treasure map, this is going to be really bad. All right, put that on the bottom. That flips. I now have five fives. If they just block like this, five five. Oh, wait a second. Three, four, five, six. If I cast sublime epiphany, my constructs do get smaller. So that doesn't really work, actually, to protect my guys. I think I block like this and then chump. Here, because I can Sublime Epiphany, bounce a cat. Well, let me think about this. I can one, two, three, four, five, six. So these go down to three threes. And then I make a copy of the construct and they become four fours. So yeah, I think this block makes the most sense to me. It's the safest for sure. I get an island in hand. One has six cards in hand. Create two bird tokens with flying, take an extra turn after this one. So I definitely have to counter that. Um, these might die estate-based actions now. Do I just let it happen? 
Yeah, I think the Constructs just died to a state-based effect. I didn't think about that. I figured they would have a spell like mid-combat. So I get two birds. I think I just let that happen. Yeah, having these treasures is pretty awkward. Strategic planning, but I think I can, I can probably prevent myself from dying. They pump their team and give vigilance. Um, I can counter that trigger. That actually seems reasonably worthwhile. I will have three four fours. Yeah, I think that seems worthwhile. Counter this, bounce, token, draw. So we counter this ability. Return a cat beast to hand. Create a token that's a construct. I draw a card. Yeah, this is such an awkward spot. They have a counter spell. Oh, we're very dead. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> they had everything on curve when they needed it. The fact that they paused for like 30 seconds before doing that is uh, pretty disgusting. We just die now. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, if you have it all, you have it all. Um, I don't know what else I could have done. I guess I could have Ugin the Felonar Retreat right away. Ugin would have died, but it really would have stopped them. I'm used to playing Felonar Retreat in Vintage Cube where it's pretty bad. It's quite good in uh, other things. I kind of like this card too, although how often am I casting two cards a turn, honestly? I think we're good. It's just, it's a pretty awkward spot, but we can do it. We're going to go first. Okay. Finally, we have Jace. We don't have a black mana, but like this hand is great. Step, um, island. Okay. No land worlds is excellent news. We have sensor, but I'm going to play Jace. I have Scorching Dragonfire to kill their Lotus Cobra. And then we can censor the four drop. They do actually have Lotus Cobra. All right, let's loot main phase with Jace. Because I want to hit black here. Cavalier of Gales. I mean, honestly, that might be good. I guess I discard Disfigure. And I play this land and kill this. I don't want them getting one man of any color, because I could just let them go Omnath next turn. Now, if I draw a land, I can play Midnight Clock into Sensor, and that kind of disguises what I have. Um, untapped land, please. Is it Firecraft? I can discard that to Jace. I just need a land. Yikes. Um, Firecraft can kill Omnath, but I would need red mana. All right, discard that. No land, go ahead. I'm not going to play Midnight Clock because Sensor on 4 is like at its highest value. Growth Spiral? Um, that's okay. Now they go like Mountain Omnath and I'm in trouble. Strategic planning is fine. Get rid of Land War Visionary and Elvish Mystic, so that's good news. They cycle Boon of the Wishgiver. Oh, that's a fun card. And they miss a land drop, I suppose. All right, we're definitely keeping center. There's our land, so now we get to go Island, Midnight Clock, Hold Back Jace. And now we're setting up to do some stuff. Definitely sent. This is why we saved Sensor. We knew this was the highest value target, and that just seems great for us. Because you want to play that before you play land. Yeah, the awkward post uh post land um so i can flip jace but i don't quite like there's no reason to do it now versus later so we just do it later temple of deceit so now we loot i guess i discard this heartless act flip jace um i could play temple try put a mountain on top and honestly question is karn versus cavalier of gales i guess cavalier is the most mana efficient so let's just do that putting back these two Jace upticks yeah, this is a good position to be in. We have a 5-5 five, five in play. We have a Planeswalker, which can start casting, like, awesome spells. Um, we're just a little bit scared of Agent of Treachery on Flipped Jace. Hedron Archive. Yeah, okay, I'm a bit scared of Agent of Treachery on Flipped Jace, because this is, this is looking like that. Although, they don't have that much to flash back. I guess it'd be, like, Boon of the Wishgiver. That's not the end of the world. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So... Kind of like going Karn, uptick. Ooh, Colgon's Command. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we play Blood Crypt Tapped. Yeah, let's do this. Actually, I don't really want to play Blood Crypt Tapped. I'm going to play this Mountain, attack for five. So if they have Agent of Treachery on Jace, he doesn't ultimate, and the cards they can cast aren't that scary. Healing Karn would be a bit worse, but not the end of the world either. This is definitely some type of Agent of Treachery nonsense. Oh, what is this? Beginning of each upkeep, create a 3-3 blue serpent coil. Sacrifice a serpent, tap a permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated. Orchid's indestructible? What is this card? 
What? All right. Um, level this up, I suppose. All right. We'll wait until combat. That's insane. The three three. But where did this card come from? I've never seen that before. They foretell probably just the one that draws them cards. Never reach right. Okay. We have Sublime Epiphany as well. That seems very good. So what do I do here? I want to just cast Sublime Epiphany because. They're in trouble. I guess we move to combat and see if they tap down my Cavalier. And it's Sacrifice a Serpent, right? Another Serpent. Okay. So, yeah, I think I have a game plan. We're going to move to combat and see what happens. Okay, so we get a free attack. That's good. Now, what do we want to do? I think I just want to Sublime Epiphany while I have the chance. Although, yeah, I can't leave them in play. This is the beginning of each upkeep. So, let's cast this. We're gonna bounce coma, make a copy of Cavalier, and I draw a card. Two, three, four, five. I only untapped easy black mana. Six, we do that. This gives me lethal in the air. I also get to brainstorm, which is good. Lava coil is pretty good too, so put back Blood Crypt Island. Karn is going to They concede, yeah, we, we have that one. That's ten in the air, they would have to sacrifice it. I was gonna kill this thing, and then they could tap down one, but then they're just like very far behind. Okay. I feel like we played that one fairly decently, but I'm scared of Coma. I don't know if there's really too much I can do to stop that though, so we're just gonna run it back. All right, well, this hand's good. We can save this mountain to make both of these enter untapped. Probably wanna opt turn one. And our opponent, they did not mulligan. All right, let's play this, reveal mountain, pass. We opt, I'm putting lands on the bottom, I have plenty now. Wait, they're playing Temple of Milady? They've had Lotus Cobra every single game. Glorybringer is definitely going on top in this matchup. So, Foreboding Runes, Reveal Mountain, we Heartless Act, Lotus Cobra. This just slows them down quite a bit, gives us time to set up for Glorybringer. It also hurts their mana, because we can go Midnight Clock this turn and then Glorybringer the following turn. Okay, so they get a land. Okay, they get a plane. They probably have Omnath. Ooh, we finally get our Agent of Treachery, so let's play the mountain they know about. This hides the most information. Play Midnight Clock. Turn 4, Glorybringer Exert, killing Omnath is going to be pretty good if we can get there. Okay, it's not that. It's got to be something else. Please be a creature we can kill. The 4, 5. For no value. Alright, alright. Reasonably brutal. I can't, I can't attack with Glorybringer. Um, let's play this. I mean, I think I'm just going to play Glorybringer and not do anything with it. Like, now we're in this weird stalemate, and that's okay. But next turn, I can Glorybringer plus Colgon's command to kill Yorian. That might be the first time I've ever cast Glorybringer with a creature in play and not exerted it. Like, Emergent Sequence. So they get a 2 2 land creature. Okay. Well, they can't have Sublime Epiphany. This could go okay. The last cards in hand are probably quite good. I think I'm going to attack and exert and kill the mountain. If they block, then I can Kolagon's command the Yorian and get back Glorybringer, which seems quite good. We let damage go through, and now we Kolagon's command, getting you back, doing two damage here. One, two, three. That seems quite good. And then now we can play Blood Crypt Tapped. Or do I want to start leveling this up? Maybe I want to start leveling this up. Let's play this as black mana. One, two, three. So now I can Agent of Treachery if they play Como or whatever, Coma. The hope is that, well, I don't know. I don't know if them casting Beanstalk Giant is good for me here. So this can't get Hexproof, right? All right, yeah, they're just dead. They have one card in hand. They're pretty much just dead. Put an hour counter. Um, they could sacrifice a Serpent to prevent me from Agent of treachery I guess, but that seems really loose. Yeah, so we just go island, steal this. Let me make sure. It's just indestructible. It's not hexproof. Yeah. Give me your friend! Yoink. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> um, I can sacrifice a serpent to deny them double blue. I kind of like this prospect, actually. One, two, three. Yeah, I like this prospect. Because their take an extra turn spell was blue. That's what they foretold, actually. That was last turn. And now they can't cast Beanstalk Giant easily. Okay, they... <laughs> I can't believe they're still playing. Respects to the opponent here. 
these go off, we get a thing, midnight counter goes up. Throw the possibility is pretty good. Go ahead and play Glorybringer first. One, two, three, four, five. Kill their thing. Yeah, swing out. Attack with all. Got attacked and exerts. Um, I don't know what I can draw off Thrill of Possibility, so we're just gonna wait. Um, I can deny them double blue, I suppose. But I don't think that matters too much now. So I think we just let them have their mana. So they can take an extra turn, make two one ones. Okay. I don't think that saves them though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, yeah, so they just have to chump block. Let's throw a possibility and see what we hit here. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be fun. I get to be the Sublime Epiphany one. Although, honestly, I have to Sublime Epiphany my Glorybringer instead of Agent of Treachery, which feels a little bit rough, but it still feels great. Three, four, five, six, Sublime Epiphany, cast, bounce, create a token, target player draws. Um, I guess if I make a token of Glorybringer, they're going to tap it down. So I guess we, what do we do here? Bounce, Como, Agent of Treachery, their Coma. All right. Yeah, bounce this. Create a token that's a copy of him. I draw a card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, the moral victory. All right, round two was just a really big fluke, I suppose. That was a, a sweet deck. Let's go to the deck. I don't know why I view my previous deck. I mean, this deck was awesome. It had interaction. It had Agent of Treachery, Sublime Epiphany. It had the best dragon aside. He's the best dragon, but he's not the cutest. He's not the most adorable, and he's not the friendliest. But he's better. <laughs> yeah, this deck was sweet. If you want to see more of this cube, let me know, and I'll keep drafting it. See you guys soon.